Welcome back. Today's topic is tank armour. We shall be looking at angling with its advantages and disadvantages and also what a shot trap is and where you can find them. First, angling. Spend any amount of time listening or reading about tank design and I'm going to guarantee angling will be brought up. But what is angling? Angling, or also known as sloped armour, is when you make your armour at an angle. This is very easily seen on the IS-3, in which presumably, when the designers asked how much angling the army wanted, their question was answered with a swift yes. But why would you angle your armour? Well, for starters, it greatly increases the likelihood of an enemy shell ricocheting off compared to a flat surface. The greater the angle, the more likely the ricochet. As you can see here with this photorealistic model, angling the armour greatly increased the chance of a ricochet compared to the next leading brand. Angled armour also increased the effective thickness of the armour, as any projectile would, on a straight path, have to pass through more armour. Again, under the same idea of the bigger the angle, the greater the effect. Now, with the good, there is bad, namely the space for the crew. Let's have a look. Even on this 2D plane with only one side angled, you can clearly see a large reduction in space. This makes the crew even more cramped, already competing with each other, the ammunition, the radios, the optics, and even the gun itself. While the situation would be hardly more better in a slightly less angled tank, again, the greater the angle, the bigger the effect, even with the negatives, when stuck in essentially what a metal box for hours, and now in modern tanks, days at a time, every inch is going to feel like a mile. Mind you, it cannot be compared to the absolute hellish idea of being stuck in an L3. Ugh. Sloped armour is still being used on modern tanks, often in tandem with other techniques like explosive reactive armour. And sometimes, sloped armour isn't even used for tanks. V-shaped holes have been a thing for quite a while and work under similar principles. In those, an armoured personnel carrier or armoured car would run over a mine, the upward force from the blast, would, instead of going through the floor, would be redirected to the sides. And also, fragmentation, under the same principle as those shells, would have more armour to go through. So that's sloped armour. Now we shall move on to shot traps. Shot traps are put simply when the armour is at an angle, when a shell hit that bit of armour, would ricochet down and hit a weaker point. The areas where you'll find these typically are around the turret. Now you can really easily see these on the Panzer II, the Panzer III, and the Panzer IV. However, this is a late war example, but you can generally see where it would be behind that spaced armour right there. I'll tackle spaced armour in another video. Usually, it's the turret ring that is hit, and even if a shell doesn't penetrate the turret ring, it often jams the turret in place greatly impacting the ability to fight in that vehicle. The bis biggest example I could ever think of would be Tiger 131, who fell victim to this in North Africa. And you can even see where this shell had hit, because a lot of museums would not repair the damage, insisting that it is a part of the vehicle's history, a sentiment that I agree with. Now I bring it up, the turret ring is one of the biggest sources of issues I can think of when it comes to protection. My favourite example of poor turret ring placement is the Type 95. In a video published by the US Army, it was actually encouraged for an infantryman to run up behind the Type 95 when the turret is at a certain angle and place a rock or canteen just under the turret ring which would actually wedge in the back of the turret and jam the whole thing. You can see this video in the description, however, I wouldn't recommend using this as the only source of information on the Type 95, as remember, this is supposed to make the idea for soldiers to run up to tanks and tackle them head-on slightly less daunting and give them a more confidence than necessarily there should be with their tactics. So take what they say with a grain of salt, but generally a great video to watch. 
While short traps are being less and less prevalent as our understanding of tank design is being bettered or by the years, you will never truly avoid them as there's always going to be some weird spot on the tank when the turret is at a certain angle where that could be a thing if someone managed to do a wonder shot. But they are definitely less prevalent. Now this was a bit of a uh, shorter video with only two subjects crammed together but I thought they were definitely things worth talking about and I probably will make other videos on designs of tanks and armour. But this was this week's video and I am tired of saying the word armour over and over again. You have been watching Harry and you have just learned a small amount of history. Goodbye.